Hello, welcome back again. I'm on holiday and it's painting more miniatures. I have my red slard to complete today and it's all about doing the detail. So my suggestion is, is grab your paints, uh, make sure you have your brushes ready and your miniatures. Feel free to join along with me. Um, otherwise, if you just want to chat, I'm all about just having a good old chat with you. So feel free to do that. You can ask me anything you like. That's not going to be a problem. I am certainly open to talking about just about anything. So feel free to, to join in. Okay. All right. So let's get started, shall we? I know I'm ready. And uh, after this, I will be taking off to the beach. Uh, well, that's my intention. So, yeah. Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler and today I'm going to paint a miniature while talking about roleplay games and RPGs. I'm going to be painting the Red Slard miniature by Knowles' Miniatures. So this is the detail work. I did all of the basic colours last time and now I'm ready to sort of progress and do all of the fine detail. There's a lot to do even on this miniature, so I'm not going to muck around. We're going to do as much as we possibly can. I'm going to try to work through uh, the eyes and the teeth first because I want to do a couple of different um, things to them and the only way to do that effectively is to really uh, attack them first. So that's my intention. I'm also going to run a poll at the same time. I thought it would be interesting to ask you uh, like how long have you been painting miniatures because it's normally if you're watching this you're a painter. Um, not necessarily, because you might be just here to just chat with me, which is fine, um, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to do that sort of thing, is like just ask that question. I'm kind of curious. I often find that the painters are right into all sorts of different things. So, so we're going to go with the standard size brush for now. I probably will have to drop down to a smaller brush. I'm going to go with the eyes. I want to attack the eyes first. I think that's probably going to be the most sensible thing to do. And then um, after that, I'm probably going to attack the teeth, which will probably need, I'll, I'll have to use an even smaller brush. I'm going to actually use white, and that's the only reason I'm using white, and I'm using uh, Vallejo's white. The only reason I'm using white first is just to find the detail and pull it out so that I know where to put my paint for the next time round. Uh, because right now the miniature is grades of um, black, brown, and uh, red. And then I've done some highlights with a very light orangey, um, orangey color and then another orange color over the top of that to sort of pick out some of the details. Maybe not as much as I would have liked. Hi, Overboard Dem. How's it going, Joe? Right, so. Ugh, that one's stuck on. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, why am I painting such simple miniatures? I haven't painted for a very long time. It's been like four months. And so therefore, I'm warming myself up to the more difficult stuff. I have a lot of stuff here. So, <laughs> uh, that's very, very watery. I'm not going to be thinning that down for sure. Um, let's just see how well it flows first. So I'm using a standard brush right now. And we'll just attack the eye. There we go. I was playing Dungeons and Dragons last night with my home group and uh, we were testing out Silvery Baths from Strixhaven. And I, I kind of was pretty sure that it was a broken spell, that it was, was just like too good for a level one spell. And so it took my group uh, about three hours of me using that spell, plus one of the other players also picked the spell as well to decide that we were probably going to ban that spell. Um, we're going to run it one more time in another game, because not all of our players were there. And um, But at this present time, our, our view is that Silvery Barbs is probably way too good as a spell. It's just too obvious a spell to grab, to be beneficial just about every single time. In fact, uh, with my level 1 spells, that's really all I was casting was Silvery Barbs, which is kind of ludicrous. Uh, it, <laughs> Hi Pale Rider, how's it going? Never painted a miniature, but I do draw and paint th though. Yeah, ah, okay, well that's interesting. All right, so I'm going to do the, the teeth. I don't think this brush is going to be small enough for that. So I've done the eyes, just to find them, and then I'm going to go with the, uh, 
Oh man, age just sucks. Eyes just don't work quite as well as they used to once once you get to a certain point. And um, that brush kind of looks not as small as I remember it to be. Maybe I just haven't used it for so long. That's probably part of the problem. <laughs> okay, so let's do that. But yeah, I will talk more about silvery barbs at a later point. Certainly not today. But I thought I would just let people know that's that's sort of what was going on at my table last night. And um, if we hadn't have had silvery barbs, we, we wouldn't have managed to deal with the encounter that was presented. Uh, we would have probably all died. So we're kind of glad that it was there. Not that I'm worried about dying. You know, characters dying, characters die. It's not a big deal. Um, but then again, I come from tabletop wargaming, so um, the concept of Dungeons and Dragons and how characters uh, operate, is, it actually took me a long time to understand. Um, I know that sounds strange, but it's true. Because for me, when characters died, it was like, oh, well, that's the end of that character. And then somebody said, oh, but there's a spell that can bring them back. And I'm like, what? Seriously? You're kidding me. Yeah, so one of my my uh, my issues, I have worked through that over time. I've realized that um, there is <laughs> there is a place for it that I am not ta I'm playing a tabletop war game um, such as 40k or Warhammer or anything else. So it's a little bit different. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, not exactly the same sort of game because just of the, by the very nature of the spells that are available and the other features and what things what people can do. You know, you couldn't heal on the battlefield and uh, when I was playing tabletop war games, you know, it's not like units, if they had hit points, could actually regain them. Um, if they lost um, wounds, usually they were called wounds, that was it. Mate, it's gone. Okay, all right, I better be careful now or I sacrificed them for an advantage. Um, okay, so this is... Seriously, these teeth sort of suck to get at. I'm going to say it right now. Either I'm using too much paint or my eyes aren't very good. But this, uh, these teeth, they're just, there's just not enough detail. They just don't stand out enough. They're just really hard to get at. I can see what the white paint's doing to them. But it's... It's going to just be a complete sod to deal with later on. I can see it now. It's not going to work out very well. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, so a bit of a warning to those of you who are going to do the teeth on these things. I think the two front um, teeth, they'll be fine, but the others, are they, they suck. They really do. What's that, Joe? Um, no, it's all right, Joe. Um, you don't have to worry about um, having to chat through my live streams. I know that's not... I mean, that's what I do. I do the talking while you guys do your other stuff, right? That's just how it is. You had two prints to finish at the same time and uh, had rubber gloves on cleaning the prints. I, so you're at work. Uh, you've been printing... Oh, 40K miniatures. Oh, no, you're not at work. You're, you're printing miniatures. Ah... Yeah, somebody was saying I should um, do miniature printing, but uh, um, print miniatures but, uh, or 3D printing. It's not really my thing, unfortunately. Um, and it's not cheap to do in New Zealand. Um, as I discussed last time, like um, yesterday, is my brother Sam and David are involved in it, and it's a very expensive process in New Zealand. Okay, so now I've done that, I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to tackle the spines on the back right now. I'm going to use um, blues and greens for the splotches. <clears throat> Sorry, where's my black? Yep. So who, now, um, if I get this name wrong, I do apologize. Echelon. I don't know. Better ban shield. No, shield was, shield's nothing compared to silvery barbs. Um... Frankly, I found that uh, you know, Silvery Barbs came up many more times than Shield did. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree that Shield, that plus five to AC is pretty good. It blocks pretty much all attacks. Not all the time, but certainly a lot of them. Um, and and, and it, it lasts for, a, you know, like a whole round. It's not a turn, but a round. So 
Um, but yeah, I'll get back to people on uh, my opinion of silvery barbs later on. I'm not really going to go into a huge discussion about it today. But I mean, there, there are three spells in Dungeons and Dragons 5e that are dueling spells. And they are um, counter spell, which is a very good spell. And then you've also got, I don't know, I thought, is that the right one? Layer brush, layer, oh, it's hard to tell which brush I'm looking at. I think it's this one here. Okay, the dueling spell. So, um, and silvery barbs and shield and counter spell, they're all dueling spells. They're all designed for a very specific purpose. Okay, I'm using black here, the Vallejo back black. I'm going to do the spines. And because they're dueling spells, they tend to shut down everything. You know, they have a very high probability, if you know what you're doing, of shutting things down. If you don't know what you're doing and you're using the wrong times, you know, um, certainly uh, there can be problems. What I find is that Silvery Barbs, the conditions for being able to use it, just come up more often. <clears throat> Uh, what's that, Pale Rider? Writer? Uh, my claim to D&D YouTube fame is um, Mr. Rex to put uh, one of my drawings on his um, Airfit um, video. Oh, okay. Interesting. Do you, you know, if you want a claim to fame, um, Pale Rider, I know that AJ uses a lot of art. Um, AJ Pickett uses a lot of art. So, um, And I know that he's been actually taking the time to put people's names on the artwork as well. So if you're interested, um, maybe I can kind of... You probably already know, and um, you're probably already connected with him anyway, but um, that may be a possibility. I know, I know a lot of people are looking for art all the time, not necessarily able to pay for it, um, but sometimes they can. But if you just if you all you're doing is looking for fame, it's it's easy enough to do. I know AJ goes through a lot of art with his videos. Negative space, how's it going? Twenty years since I've painted a miniature. My gosh, that's a while. Um, I tried painting my Warham War Machine army and didn't get very far. Yeah, but I I find that. You know, my eyes and my hand control is just not the same. It's not like when I was younger. It, 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 it does make a huge difference. And yes, you can use magnifying glasses and, you know, you can have use techniques to make it easier for you to actually paint stuff. That's not always going to work. I found that my eyes, even with um, glasses on, are just not as good as they used to be. Um, and so I've kind of had to accept that there are there are limitations to what I can pull off. Part of the reason why I keep trying to convince my brother um, Sam to paint on my uh, channel, but he, he uh, not Sam, David. David's the painter, paint, miniature painter. Um, Sam's the painter painter. So it does make a big difference. Uh, <clears throat> age is certainly a factor. Um, do 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 do. All right, now I need a drink of water. There's a lot of spines on this little sucker, so I'm gonna have to um take my time to get them get them right. But I'm gonna go straight back to the eyes as soon as I get a chance. I decided that red eyes sucked. When you get a miniature that's red already mostly, and then you make the eyes red, they, the eyes just sort of disappear. So I'm actually gonna go with um green eyes. I didn't really want to give it baby blue eyes. I just thought that was a bit much. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, what's that, Pale Rider? Yeah, I know AJ used uh, to post in his uh, Discord a bit. Yeah. Um, he, I mean, look, a AJ's just gotten more and more busy over time. And... Um, and uh, it's, it seems to be the case with everybody. Everybody is doing just way too much to try to keep keep afloat um, or just uh, just you know for whatever reason it, it just it's taken up more time <clears throat> so look I was thinking in terms of uh, the slard the, that, that spawning stone that they come from in limbo right it's kind of like the Borg cube, if you ask me, from Star Trek. 
you you correct me if you if you think I'm wrong in terms of my assessment, but I kind of feel like the um, the spawning stone that the slard come from and limbo is very much like the the Borg um the Borg race to a large extent. Like you know, not near, I mean they're not assimilating. Um, slard don't really assimilate. They just sort of spread themselves, um, and and feed on other species. But yes, when I was thinking about you know how you might use them, that's kind of way a way I would sort of suggest maybe you could utilize them in your game, is to think of them like the Borg from Star Trek. Uh, that was way too much paint and totally uncontrolled that time round. Oh, now I've got the shakes. Can I see? See, this is the problem with trying to keep in shot and see what I'm doing and get my brush where I need it to go. It's actually very difficult to do. You'd be surprised just how hard it is. You used to post on a dungeon class discord um, when I did some something dnd -ish. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so Mark and Gonzo have just got really busy. So um, dungeon class, don't put out a lot of content right now. And I haven't really heard very much from either of them, simply because uh, Gonzo's running his comic book um, business, and it's doing really well, and he's very happy doing that. And um, I mean, it, whether it, I mean, how long it can last, because he's got to run out of comics eventually, right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so Mark and Gonzo have been putting out a lot less on Dungeon Class for that very reason. It's, it's also why I haven't done. A, uh, a workshop or a round table with him for a very long time. Okay, so that's there. I'm going to go back to the eyes now. I still need to use the black. I will use the black. Now, green. I'm going to start with a dark green. This Nolte's Marvelous Pigments monster set has got a, a troll skin color. So it's a really dark green. I'm going to use that and go over the white. And right there. I'm still using a fairly large brush. I would say this is like a standard size brush, if you ask me. The kind of stuff I'm doing. So I wouldn't say it's the the smallest of smallest brush I've got. Okay, let's see, let's see how the eyes come out with this. Yeah, so this this going onto the white is certainly a very transparent colour. I think once I put a a lighter green over the top, it'll help. I might have to hit the eyes more than once. It's part of the reason why I went first, because I knew I would have to come back to it. Uh, like that, there's a little bit of white there, and it's, can I get at it? <sighs> oh. Okay, I think I got it. Hard to know if you've actually got got the paint in the right place sometimes. Right, so that's the green. So we're back to now. Ah, I want to do the teeth because I want to do this in layers. And I'm going to actually, um, I want to use the um, skeleton bone color over the white. And my intention behind why I'm doing that is mostly because I'm going to put a, I just want to get rid of the white effect and, and look make them look a bit more motley rather than, you know, that stark white look, which is, you know, normally what you don't want to have happen. My gosh, notifications are coming up today. Are you serious? Are you serious? Man, Windows, you suck. Stop sending me. I don't, need, I don't need to know about every single person's notification. You don't send me everything. Please. I've had enough. Leave me alone. So, yeah, I think like the Borg, the Slard could easily dominate the multiverse if left unchecked. So they, they are a major threat as far as I'm concerned um, in terms of a story. I wonder if that's part of the reason why a lot of people don't you necessarily use them that often. Because I don't think they do get used that often. This, this paint is dried hard on top. Um, okay, all right, cool. Right, so that came off. I'm going to put that over there. Is that going to go? Yep, it did. Good. Right, now. I don't need very much of this. Oh, I'm kind of curious as to how our chat's um, poll is going. So less than a year. Okay, so a lot of people are pretty new. And then there's another, the next lot, so that's 43%. And then the rest are... 
sort of 29% has uh, been painting for a while, more than five years. A lot of people never painted before. Wow. So you're obviously here for a completely different reason, um, other than painting, I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting. Okay, so let's get this on. I'm going to have to go to the smaller brush. There's no way I can do it with that one. I'm going to have to go. Is it actually that much smaller though? Hmm, hard to know. I kind of feel like they're kind of the same. They do sort of feel like they're the same size. Maybe I picked up the wrong size brush. I did ask them for a standard size brush rather than the high detail brush. <laughs> I may not have got that one. Maybe that's the one I didn't get. Okay, right, holding my breath and trying to deal with the teeth. We're going to do with the big ones first. Let's see if we can get the paint where I want it to go. Not too bad. And then do that again. One of the things I often forget when I'm painting with a very fine brush is I have to make sure that I only paint in small spurts and that I then clean off the brush quickly because it dries so quickly on a small brush. It's one of the things I think a lot of people don't necessarily tell you that often is like small brushes, I've got to, so I'm cleaning off now, a small brush with paint on it, the tip just dries really, really quickly and I'm in hot weather right now as it is. Um, you can't tell, thank God. Um, that's why there's part of the reason why the camera, you know, I don't have a second camera, is if you knew, I'm actually shirtless right now. How's that? Okay, I'm shirtless. It's because it's so hot in my office, I would just fall apart. Now, if you can sit here like a funny noise in the background, that's not a fan for me. No, I'm, I'm sacrificing myself. No, no, the fan is for the uh, the computer, which is seriously taxed by the heat right now. <laughs> uh, dear. And that is probably way too much. It's kind of too much now. I don't know if I want to bother fixing it though, because it's such a it's such a pig to get at. I mean, seriously, look at look at just how f how difficult those teeth and they're so small, so hard to get at. Uh, did I just do too much there? All right, now I feel like I've got to fix something. Uh, no, I don't know about that. Hello, John. How's it going? We are the slard. Resistance is futile. Exactly. I don't even know that they even would they even bother saying that. They, they <laughs> I, I think they. I think you just you just get uh, um, injected, and that would be it. Um, okay, so that's not going to work. So that means I've got to go and try and fix it. I'm going to use the highlighting orange that I was using before. Maybe I can get rid of that that mess that I kind of have made for myself there. So this is the Knowles's Marvelous Rust Monster color. Um, and we'll see if Fred can fix his mistake. Knew there's going to be something happen. Right, now I'm going to get as little paint on there as possible because it's just... A smidge. Oh, I don't know. Actually, maybe I'll do that further along. Just to help bring out the mouth. Maybe that's not a bad idea. Well, let's do that now. Yeah, I think maybe more in the front rather than the sides. Just use it there just to sort of go around it. Um, I don't know what that means. I have no idea. I'm, I'm not even going to try. Is it um, Miffy something? It, it's got to be a bot, right? It's got to be a bot of some kind. Well, bot, nobody cares about what you've said. Because it doesn't make any sense to anybody. So, yeah. <laughs> Give it up. I hope it is a bot. <laughs> now that I've said that, I do hope it is a bot. Have I just insulted somebody? Okay. Just a little touch. A little touch of paint. There we go. Now, um, 
Where was I? So I'd done the teeth with the color that I wanted. I need to go back to my black because I'm still trying to um, deal with my um, little spikes. I think my spikes are mostly done though. There's a little bit of paint there. Um, I thought I would use like a, a purple color as well with the spikes rather than just black. Oh, there, there's a spike I missed just on the top of the head. Yeah, apparently Fred has bots. Or do I have the bot? As in, do I have a, uh, a virus or a, a disease? Do I have the bot? No, I don't have the bot. I'm all good. I'm botless. You know you're doing something right if you've got bots in your um, live, live stream. Is that really the tr case? Probably not. <laughs> Janchevic, how's it going? Uh, last month I painted uh, miniatures for the first time. Nice. Do you know, it's funny, with all of the uh, with the inability to actually play Dungeons and Dragons in person, I, I, I actually think that people might be painting more miniatures than they ever have before. Okay, so I'm going to have to stand this up because there's no way I can do it. Keep it in, in frame. And get the paint where I want it to be. So if you've, you suddenly notice that you can't really see very much, it's because Fred is unable to get at it in this current position. The pill bottle does actually get in the way at certain times, but it certainly makes it easier to hang on to. All right, so am I, am I good? No, there's... So there's going to be points and points of time where I go all silent as I'm trying desperately to figure out if I've hit the paint in the right place. Okay, all right. So that's that's little that little bit there. Mario, how's it going? Um, what's what do you got here? I like how Paul kind of shows how much people um, picked up painting because of uh, COVID. Yeah. Uh, the caps, yeah, I did notice the caps. No, it's all right. I understand. I'm assuming that um, you accidentally put the um, hit the uh, the caps button. Um, now, or maybe you, it's stuck on caps. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too upset about it. Don't worry. Right. So I am actually gonna use this orange around the eyes at the top. Um, just a line of such, just there, and. I'm kind of like using the tip and the edge of the brush. And I might just do a couple of those wrinkles and um, flabby bits down there as well. Hi Bliss, how's it going? I would love to be able to paint minis. I've been um, interested for a long time. Well, there's nothing stopping you, as far as I know, unless there's some information that, that I need to be um, I'm privy to. Of course, I'm actually kidding. There's no information I need to be privy to with regard to your own life. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to do it and you've got uh, you've got the cash to, to pay for the, the brushes and the paints and get the miniatures, then go for it. I kind of feel like people need to have more indoor hobbies nowadays. I was talking to um, the manager at Vagabonds and he was saying like a lot of people realized that they just didn't have enough hobbies uh, with all these lockdowns that were taking place in New Zealand. And I imagine that's the same in other places around the world as well as like you suddenly realize, oh, I, um, I, I need more hobbies because I just don't know what to do with myself now. All the things I used to do, I, I can't really do now. Now, am I, am I going to do that? Just there, just there, just there. I think that's enough. Okay, all right. I'll leave that alone. <laughs> and, now, uh, I need a drink of water. Uh, we're going to attack some claws and some um, talons. Very, very shortly. Uh, I think what I will do is I will hit the base with uh, what is essentially the gray color we'll just go with a gray color 
Okay, so put that brush aside. I'm gonna get my 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 crappy older standard brush, which now looks like a splayed out. I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about. I haven't tried to resurrect it. Uh, okay, so now um, let's turn this little wheel around a little bit more. I better give it a shake. Kind of forgot that. Make sure to shake your paints before you use them. It's the medium in there that needs to be mixed up with the paint. What's that, Bliss? Uh, that's the thing. I need money. Yeah. Totally, totally get it. I do get it. I mean, there are ways of getting um, cheap miniatures um, in bulk, but there's a there's, there's capital layout. You know, there's a lot of money involved. And, um, I mean, you can use the cheap, nasty paints, but the, it's pretty rough in terms of how well they go on. They, you know, they, they, have, they can be a very mixed bag. Some paints are all right, some, some aren't. Um, and depending on where you are in the world, it isn't going to be the same result. So, yep, totally understand that. I guess it's going to be it's going to be just down to reading books from your library. Now, I am going to paint around the feet as best I can. I'm doing the base first for those of you who haven't figured it out because I figure I'm going to have to go over and fix up my mistakes around the feet um, because there's bound to be some spillover, right? Well, there will be with my eyes. And we'll work our way around here. See my brush is splaying out like a crazy, crazy thing. Looks a bit like my hair right now. I haven't been to the um, the barber or a hairdresser in a long time. In fact, I'm not even sure if I remember the last time I went. I've been cutting my own hair. Trust me, it's not a good idea. <laughs> I, I got my sister to fix up the mistakes that I made. <laughs> it's like, okay, yep, I got the hair shorter, but does it look all right? Mm, not, not a lot, not really. Another thing I was to, I'm thinking in terms of the slard is the slard is they're kind of like um, the alien, you know. If you've watched the alien movie, you know with Ripley, um, that uh, you know, and it's got those eggs. They you know they erupt. There's the the face hugger grabs onto you and plants its eggs or tadpole inside you, grows inside you and then bursts out. I was thinking that you know slard are kind of like the aliens from the alien movie, which then begs the question about what can we do because you think about the, there's been so many alien movies some better than others let's get real the first one was the best um and there's no going back i don't think they can reproduce the uh, the success of that that movie that movie just set the bar has a terrifying i remember watching part of that movie and saying i, I don't want to i don't want to watch the thing again <laughs> it's like oh no it's just too horrible Thank you. I, I'm glad you think it's looking good. It, it really, um, I wouldn't say that it is because I haven't really done enough to it yet. We're just trying to um, deal with the main areas. Um, but it's all still detail work. It's all still detail work, John. Kukulank um, the Van FY. I don't actually know what FYI means. I have to look up a lot of these things. These shortenings and so forth, they're kind of beyond me. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm a noob when it comes to the, the shortenings. And yes, I know I'm on the internet and I probably should know more about those shortenings, but I just don't. I'm going to struggle pronouncing that name. Chulhug? Uh, Chul, Chul, oh, Chul, mate. I, I apologize, man. There's no way I can pronounce that. It's beyond me. I'm pretty good at being able to decipher when somebody speaks to me in a different accent and they're speaking English, whether it's their first language or it's their second language. I'm pretty good at picking out um, what people are saying to me. But written is one of my weakest aspects in terms of my own language is the written side of things. I struggle. There are the days that I struggle trying to fight between 
North American modified English and my own um, English spelling, it comes up a lot because I try to put the channel stuff out um, in North American English, their spelling. Um, but I also have to remember that I have to use my own spelling in my own land, land country because if I spell like uh, an American in New Zealand, everything's spelt wrong. So <laughs> we're a good portion of it anyway. Okay, I feel like I'm not too bad on the, uh, the base there. I will have a quick look. What's that, John? Um, is it a work in progress and and it does uh, look good so far? Yeah, that's good. I'm glad it does look like a look all right so far. That's a good sign. Right now, what do I what do I do with a little cap? Oh, there it is. Oh, I almost lost the cap. You know what it is like. You lose the cap and like you know, the brush is going to probably die. Oh, come on you, go together. No, it's not going to let me. Try again. It's like threading the needle. Ah, oh, there. <laughs> Man, that was hard. Okay, so next, now we're gonna, I'm going to attack the eyes and the teeth again because I want to keep working on them. I figure that they are going to take more effort on my part than anything else. Um, which brush am I using? Oh, it's that one. Okay. And then eyes that's right we're gonna i'm gonna hit them with the green again because i just don't feel like there's going to be enough of this darker color here and oh actually i still got some that's not dried up yet that's good is it still moving yeah it's still moving my gosh <laughs> i didn't need any watering down whatsoever all right yeah i think the green eyes are going to work much better than having red eyes Frankly, I think it would have been a mistake to do red eyes. And blue eyes, I've got blue eyes, but I don't want to give my um, my slard blue eyes. It's not like you're going out with um, with uh, a blonde blue-eyed um, slard. Uh, so let's let's not trick our players too much, shall we? <laughs> All right. So that. I think that looks a lot better. I'm happy. I'm happier with that than I was before. All right. So yes, back to um, the Alien movie and Ripley, Sigourney Re Weaver. I, I, you know, it always amazes me when I see people who talk about how um, you know female leads. You know, don't, we don't get enough of them. We haven't had any really good characters and or they want to replace existing characters that have been created. Uh, like, seriously, Ripley from Aliens is one of the best female heroines ever, that we've ever seen. Give us more of that. Give us more of that. Give them stuff of their own that isn't, hasn't been, it hasn't been trampled by um, male characters already. There hasn't been any track record. They're completely new. Hi, Pat Sherwood. Now, Pat Sherwood is a patron, for those of you who don't know. He's been a patron for quite a while. Is it nine months now? I think it's much longer than you said you were going to hang around for. Um, and I do appreciate it. I really do. <laughs> uh, okay, now. Right, this is... So a little bit of paint had formed on the top there, but we're going to use this. I'm attacking my teeth again. And thank you, um, Pat. I'm I'm glad you think that it's looking good. I, I feel like it's it's coming together now. Right now, uh, small brush. Where did I stick it? There, that's where. That's it. And where's the paint? Did I put the paint out? Yes, I did. The paint's there. It's this one here. What did I use? Sorry, I didn't even show you guys what I was using. I just put it out. Zombie flesh. <laughs> I know you're thinking, why would you use zombie flesh on the teeth? Because I want the teeth to look really gnarly. And um, I feel like zombie flesh is the way to go. Because they'll stand out. I, I mean, I could use a brown. I've seen people use a browns um, on the teeth. And I don't like it, frankly. I didn't think it was a good idea myself. Um, you can disagree with me. That's fine. That's, that's the... Oh, man. Come on, Fred, hold the hand still. 
We're almost. We're almost there. I get the other one. I am probably going to try to hit the teeth very, very, very gently that are inside. I don't know how well that's going to work. Let's try that now. There's very little paint on there. There. And here is virtually impossible to do anything with. And this side is going to be just a pig. Yeah. Those inside teeth just suck. I'm going to say it now. You suck teeth inside there. You suck. I got paint in there. I feel like one side of it I've, is is just a bit whack. What is? What have I done? Have I done anything? Is it is it something I can fix? Uh, what's that, John? I would like to see a a Queen. Vodka movie. Really. Yeah, okay. I can see that. You know, I used to, I collect movies and I used to buy every single movie they ever made that had a female lead as the heroine. And there aren't that many. And the problem is you've got to make a lot of those movies because even if you look at the ones that had men in them, there's a lot of sh shite. And then there's a lot of good stuff, but you, you get the good stuff by making a lot of them. And there just hasn't been enough. And I always get frustrated. Um, they always seem to balls them up so badly. Uh, or they get so much negative press because uh, for some reason they've decided that they have to go a particular route, which is odd. Anyway, back to Slard. Because we, we were ta I was talking about Ripley from the Aliens movie. But the fact that these um, slard reproduce with eggs that in, you inject into your host, the slard's like a, a threat to every living life form in your Dungeons and Dragons worlds. Like across all of the multiverse, every world is in danger from these little sods. Uh, da -da -da -da, move this round. Okay, I'm going to have to use black again. And I'm going to have to move a lot faster. Oh, jeez. I've missed so many areas. I was hoping I would be able to get all this done in one shot. I'm not sure that it's going to happen. You never know. You never know. I mean, I ran late last time, didn't I? I was going to do just an hour, and I hung around for more than an hour. <laughs> that, 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 that was a, well, yes, Fred, you were planning to hang around for an hour only. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, so that's the brush I'll use. The very fine one. And we'll tackle... Now, will I find the... Oh. So this is what I hate, is you, you look at the thing and you think, oh, okay, yeah, it's covered, and then you look back and you're like, oh, no, I did miss a section. And then you look back again and you spot from a different angle. There's too many angles. Too many angles to deal with. Ah, there it is. It's on the arm. That's right, I remember seeing it on the arm. It's on the inside of the arm. I'm not surprised I missed that one. You can't even see what's going on, probably, because I've tried to angle it so I can see. But I have no idea how you'd be able to see it. But the inside of the, um, the spikes on the forearms of this thing, really easy to miss. And the underneath as well, apparently. Oh, did I put much too much paint there? Oh, a little bit, did, I did. I did a little bit more than I was hoping for. What's that, John? Um, she united the Celtic clan and went to war with Rome. Ah. Yeah, I, I wasn't too sure um, who you were talking about. I, 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 I kind of heard the name, but it's, um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I did not remember. My memory for this sort of thing is not nearly as good as some of my friends who've got a much better memory at, at everything. Um, okay, so that looks like... Okay, so now let's deal with the, the talons. I'm going to try to 
get the talons black and then we're going to do some something to them to make them sort of stand out a bit more now i don't think that that brush is just too small we're not going to get the paint on fast enough so i'm going to shift to a larger brush i'm going to go for my fluffy brush oh, i'm only kidding my older standard brush how's that sound um thread the needle yeah okay got it yeah there we go so we just get this paint on fairly quickly on the front of the talons and then move my way around to the back of it which i'm not looking forward to doing the inside of the, the talons they're going to be so difficult to, to reach but we can kind of pack the paint on pretty quickly by just doing that and then shift the angle do that again oh look hairy bit coming off the side and now the other side let's do them on the front surface ta -ta 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 -ta. If I'm not talking, it's because I'm having to concentrate. <laughs> she was a warrior queen. Aha! So, back to my story about um, all life forms in a Dungeons and Dragons world being threatened by Slard. I can actually see a predator-like race hunting down Slard for sport. You know, like, the predator hunts down the aliens from the alien movie, or the is it the Predator Alien movie? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You, 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 the thing that Arnold Schwarzenegger had to deal with dropped a great huge log on um, those sorts of uh, predators. So, so I was thinking, what would make a good predator to hunt down Slard in a Dungeons & Dragons world? Well, it's not going to be the Modron Primus. He, like, created the problem in the first place. And it doesn't seem to have any desire to solve the, the spawning toads anyway. So um, it's got to be a different species or race that deals with the the slard and as they sort of probably exist within the i mean they exist within the multiverse but i would imagine that the astral sea is one of the first places they are sort of leeching out of from limbo so i had thought there was a race that would sort of apply to that quite nicely oh my god can i just say that getting in between the talons is much harder okay so I don't know what that means ONG I don't know I don't know what that means uh, what do I do with this what do I do with this I'm gonna remove it do I remove it can I be bothered removing it I don't really want to go through removing stuff all the time from names that I don't recognize but do your thing. Nobody's going to pay attention to you. We're going to ignore you now. <laughs> All right. Okay. So back to uh, back to my discussion about uh, and painting talons. That is. Sorry about that. Remember, we were painting at the same time. So back to the fact that you've got to have some sort of uh, species or race hunting down slard. I thought the um, githsarai would be pretty good at hunting down slard monsters. They sort of make sense. Uh, they, they feel like they would be on the border and probably show far more interest than the Modrons who seem to be currently not particularly interested uh, in doing very much at all. Okay, so this is, this is going to suck. I've got to try to get on the inside of these talons. And with the kind of light that I have currently and the angles that I'm dealing with, This is probably going to be a, a bollock up, if you ask me. Um, even changing the angle doesn't seem to help that much. Really not liking the um, the way that they've um, put these talons on the on the fingers. The pose is just so annoying to get at. Not happy. Oh, hello, Eric. Fry Minis is here. Um, now, for those of you who don't know Fry Minis, Eric runs a channel 
that deals with previews of um, the, the Wizards of the Coast books that come out. And on top of that, I will meant I will talk about what you've got there. You've got a question there. I will say I will talk to it. But I want to say um, you need to, go, need to go and check him out. He's still unsure about whether he should be live streaming um, painting miniatures uh, because he doesn't get a lot of views. But I, I'm going to tell you now, and you guys will can confirm for him that um, people who 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 follow uh, painting streams and painting videos much more loyal and will watch for much longer than other people who might only hang around for about 10 minutes or 5 minutes. And you're much more likely to get a super chat from them, um, particularly if they like what you're doing, and you you talk along, because they'll be doing their own painting at the same time. So um, encourage him to do it, because I know he's still on the fence about whether he should do it or, do it or not. Okay, Eric, what do you got here? I'm going to be playing a gem dragonborn from the moon. What is your favorite thing about the moon? What character would you build based around the moon? Okay, um, I would probably build a gray blue big headed alien. Um, my favorite thing about the moon. You've opened up a hornet's nest of conspiracy theories and other particular particular strange things that Fred has collected in his brain over time, um, which I feel is going to distract from the painting significantly. But we'll go with it while I try to deal with my talons. So I don't believe that the Earth is capable of capturing a moon of the size that we currently have. We are now entering into the way out of the out of your mind stuff, okay? <laughs> Joe's not that loyal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, all right. I, I, I admit, not everybody's that loyal. Okay, fair enough. Now, um, now the, <laughs> the thing is with the moon, it's just too big for a planet of our size to be capturing a moon of that size. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So why is it there? Well, there has been some historical um, evidence to suggest that the moon was not always there. And... Um, the moon doesn't move in a way that it should. In other words, you only we see one side of our moon as, it, uh, as it's going around our planet Earth. And that shouldn't happen either. Uh, not only that, the impact craters on the moon are way too uh, shallow. They're not deep enough. And a lot of meteorites and rocks hit it. So what's going on there? Are they traveling really slow? Do they slow down before they hit the thing? Um, or is the moon just made out of some very, very dense material? And there's been a suggestion that maybe the moon is hollow and actually not a normal moon, that it's actually a hollowed out uh, structure uh, that aliens um, move. Um... Now, I told you this was a dangerous topic to talk about. Now, everybody is starting to wig out now because it's like you've just entered, oh, it's one of those conspiracy theory um uh, channels now. <laughs> um, so I, I think it might be actually hollowed out. I think the thing may have been parked there and artificially set up to actually protect Earth from major impact because Jupiter captures a lot of the um, rocks that uh, would normally hit Earth, but the moon stops a lot of the others. And I think that it's there specifically to make sure that Earth doesn't get struck and wiped out by another big rock or comet or meteorite. Um, and that's been done by um, aliens. I think that's and so probably also why we've never gone back, you know. I mean, you could say, well, yeah, the Americans just don't have the money. Nobody else has the money. It's too expensive to do. No, 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 no. No, I think they didn't go back because they knew that somebody would be very upset if they um, started landing on somebody else's uh, rock. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't sort of like invite yourself to somebody else's space station and say, oh, guess what? I'd just like to hang out here and plant a flag here. Uh, so, yes, okay, this is the weird side of Fred. If for those of you who have thought you've had enough, I fear enough of your time to leave. <laughs> Hi, Aaron, how's it going? Dead gods, um, slard, mind flayers, gith, astral sea, always a good time. Well... It could be, not necessarily, but it could be. What do you got here, Eric? They are making a movie about this um, moonfall coming out 
out this year with Hail, Hail Berry. Man, I always liked Hail Berry. I, I always felt like she didn't get an opportunity to play enough roles, but it is what it is. I'm hoping we get to see Hail Berry and John Wick 4, because I can imagine they're going to make another one. <laughs> okay, now, concentrate, Fred. Eyes. I'm going to use Grug Green. So this is me adding some a flash of colour to my eyes, because although dark green might look all right, it doesn't really stand out, and I want my eyes to be kind of standy out. Um, is that the grey? No, we're just going to put that there. I need to do the feet. I know, I realise I haven't done anything with them. I know I'm running behind time for so supposedly an hour stream. My voice can only hold up for so long. Plus, I want to go to the beach, and I don't think it's raining, so you're probably not going to get me at 2 o'clock doing this uh, New Zealand time. Um, oh, oh. Darn it. But yes, Eric, th thank you very much for the $5 super chat. And you super chat everybody. Man, thread the needle, Fred. Come on, get it done. Ah, there. Oh, man. Whew, that was hard. Okay, <laughs> next. Um, fine brush. I think it's that one. We're going to hit the eyes with the Grug Green. Is my brush wet enough? Yes, it is. And is it... Okay, I don't, I don't think I'll thin this down. Let's just see if we can get it in. Yeah, I'm probably not going to paint across the whole thing. Kind of the outside is going to have a bit of the green, the darker green. And then, let's do that again. Uh, no, too much bright paint. I can see the big blob there. Forgot to brush it off. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so now if Eric is still here, I would like to point out, Eric, that given that my channel uh, maybe gets uh, between five to a thousand views on a video... Uh, that's um, either a live stream or a on a particular topic that is or on a uh, edited video and uh, in, in, in what about a, a week or two weeks live streams with painting usually best I could do is 200 views best I could do does that mean I should not do it no no that's not not the case just gonna say it it's out there putting it out there um John uh, in 5e, I made a, a great weapon fighter that wields a claymore. Oh, okay, follows a, a deity called William Wallace from the Gardener. <laughs> For those of you who don't know about William Wallace, do a Google search, you'll find out. Uh, very important individual in history. Uh, what's this? The old helmet, strap on, spell backwards is uh, non-parts. Is no parts? No parts, really? Strel strap on, spell backwards is no parts. I don't know what that means, Old Helmet. The Old Helmet, I don't know. I'm hoping they change the name of Spelljammer to something cool. All right, okay, fair enough. Um, right, so um, so I'm going to attack the base. I had another color here. Yes, there it is. I'm going to use a lighter. This is orc skin. This is a, a gray skin color. So I'm going to hit that on the, the bottom of my miniature. Uh, for the base, and then I'm going to try to tackle my, my toes. Um, and we'll see how that works out. I think it'll be alright. Is that the right brush? Oh, I'm going to get mixed up with stuff. Oh, this, this, is, this is not good. Okay, there we go. There it is. And we'll whack this on. Whack everything on, eh? <clears throat> now, for those of you who are unaware, um, some slard can change their form depending on what's going on. And I'm going to suggest to you that that is a great opportunity as a dungeon master to exploit them to infiltrate 
another society. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Now, if you really want to mess with your players, that would be a great way to go. I, I think that um, there's nothing short of problems that could be created by doing that. And does that mean you shouldn't do it? No, that's, that's how you create drama. You've got to break a few eggs, you know. You might break the egg, but it's still dramatic. So don't not do it. Break the egg. Who doesn't love a great omelette or scram scrambled eggs? I like scrambled eggs. Uh, certainly I like an omelette. Um, if you don't like eggs, that's fine. I know some people don't, don't, don't like eggs. But um, yeah, I'm not suggesting that your Dungeons & Dragons game is an egg. <laughs> Sards um, look like they uh, could be moon creatures. Exactly. Exactly. They, they could well be. Joe, that's a very good point. I feel like that should have been my answer to Eric in the first place. I'm going to play a moon creature that is a slard. And uh, I'm a parking warden. I'm a, I'm a, uh, a slard on the moon parking warden who uh, goes around giving tickets to um, other racers who try to park on my moon. <laughs> yeah, dear. Okay, that's a weird. <laughs> You're going to get more of it, unfortunately, people. Um, now, I've got to do a fun with monsters. I'll see you later, Eric. No problems. I'm glad I could. I, I hope I have uh, made up your mind. Have I made up your mind? I don't know. I don't know if I've made up your mind. Okay, where is this going? This is this is a lot harder than it looks. Trust me. Painting with a camera going and trying to keep everything in f in the frame super difficult. <clears throat> John, you lost the message. I hope I hope it was on something nice. I didn't even I didn't even have a chance to spot it. Is it a rephrasing required? Did predictive text affect um, your ability to put the message in? Have you got something better for me? I oh, hopefully. Oh, there we go. There it is. Um, yep. Um, and my family fought alongside um, William Wallace. Okay, cool. In the Scottish War for independence. Simon Fraser, the Patriot, was uh, William Wallace's friend and brother in arms. Mm, cool. Look, now, William Wallace is probably the first, is, I believe he was the first one to deal with cavalry. Because in the past, you, usually dealing with cavalry didn't work very well. I don't know if it was the first one, but they certainly used this technique. Because cavalry were tearing up the Scottish. And so they what they would do is they would... Um, now, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, John. Uh, they would have their pikes lying on the ground in front of them. They would be all lined up. They would make a lot of noise and and basically taunt and encourage the enemy to charge them with their cavalry. Then, just as they were on top of them and they didn't have a chance to move, they would pick up the pi um, pikes and uh, lock them into the ground and use them to take out the horses, uh, which is a very smart maneuver because usually cavalry would wipe out infantry. Uh, infantry Infantry against cavalry is not a good combination. And it's not like horses would just run into pikes. So if you really had to sort of um, trick people into charging into you and then you'd get your pikes out later. A, a pretty effective method, if I remember right. <coughs> Okay, that. Okay, that's that's good enough. I'm moving that moving that away. Um, so leave the base alone. Let's move on to something else. Um, my eyes are not too bad. I think while I've got the black, have I got the black still? Have I still got enough black here? Is it dried up? It may be too dry. I'm going to pr try and put the eye. So. It's supposed to be a line that you draw for the eye, 
because it's like a, um, a snake eye or a lizard eye. So they're not really like a round dot. So I'm not going to be using like a toothpick to do it. You just mis misspelled something? Yeah, fair enough. Right, so yeah. So John, you'll tell me if I got it wrong with um, the strategy uh, with regard to infantry, infantry and cavalry. Uh, it's not working at all. Why is that not working? Try again. That's still not working. Why is it not working? What am I doing wrong? I'm confused now. Uh, what's that, John? You are right. The, um, that was the only way to uh, deal with the uh, cavalry, by using pikes. Yeah, but you couldn't just set up your um, your line and, uh, and, and have the pikes, because the, the horses wouldn't run into them. So you, you had to kind of trick them to do it. Okay, here we go. I did it! <laughs> Let's do it again. Uh, yep, it's good enough. Maybe not exactly where I'd wanted it to go, but it's close enough, and I don't want to um, balls up what I've already tried to achieve so far. Uh, okay, so next, my talons on my fingers are black but they don't look that cool because there's nothing going on with them so what i think i will do is i'm actually going to use a brown i know that sounds strange why would you highlight no that's not the brown it's the wrong one okay albear the darker brown the albear brown on the front of the talons to sort of make them sort of pop out a bit that's my plan is it a good plan not necessarily I'm just going to try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, bad. But still going to... No, that's not the right brush. <laughs> what did I do picking that one up for? All right. Fine brush detail. Um, I'll, I'll be brown. Let's get just a little bit of that on there. And the side of the brush, like so. Side and tip. Side and tip. Let's do it. Now I'm counting on this being slightly thin, um, quite deliberately. I'm not going all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going to do the tip of it. And I'll do that again. On the other one, that's one, two, three. It is really only, it's only a slight differentiation from black. Man, the paint is drying so fast in this office, it's not funny. <clears throat> so, now another thing about slard is some of them can change shape, so it makes them really nasty infiltrators. You could literally wipe out a whole town or a city with slard. Just one slard could do the whole 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 lot. It would take a little bit of time, but you know, once you've got um, a few uh, slard um, tadpoles uh, nesting in somebody else, uh, it won't be long before there isn't too many people who aren't transformed into slard. So if you really wanted to really scare your players, suddenly people having um, slard tadpoles um, tearing through their chests, would be quite terrifying. I think this is one of, one of the reasons why people tend to not do it, because it's it's got a very horror aspect to it. I mean, let's get real. The Alien movie with the aliens going through the chest, it's a science fiction movie, but it's a horror movie. It's, it's not your normal science fiction movie. It's definitely horror. It's like the Terminator. The original Terminator was much more horror. And they've never been able to reproduce it properly because they always keep trying to make an action movie. It's not an action movie, okay? It's a horror. So, Slard is a horror story monster. Sorry about that. I'm spitting everywhere now. And we're over time, but um, we're going to get that there done. That's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I kind of feel like I need to spend a lot more time on this little sucker now.
I'm kind of attached. I almost feel like he's my little buddy. <laughs> I know that's really, really strange. I should be painting a different miniature. I know. I know all this. Um, another way to deal with the overwhelming military force was that William uh, Wallace did a... Uh, what's that? Bank, Bank, Bank Burn Bridge. Did it Bank Burn Bridge. I can't remember what happened at Bank Burn Bridge. It's been too long. Um, so, yes. Okay, so the brown is fine. The feet need their talons done. Um, no, there's too much to be done in, in the time frame. And, and the, the next step is, is talons. Um, check them. Do the feet. But then in the, the colorization, the coloring of the actual because i mean it's not like you can because this is this is the very sort of um what would i say how can i say it uh this is the sort of the free-flowing decision this is the artistic side where you decide to put your splotches and your colorizing of uh and patches on your on your slard and that's very personal so i feel like i might need to leave that hello jared uh, do you wash your um paint tray free of paint or do you let it dry i let it dry um, and not worry about it. I don't worry about it. Um, would it affect the paint you put on? No. If it goes hard, it doesn't do nothing. <clears throat> it doesn't do anything. Ah, okay. Right, I'll put that back in there. <clears throat> but I, I think one of the other problems you're going to think about too slard with regard to your stories is if you're going to use them, they don't have any formal leadership. So it's probably the only reason why um, they haven't taken over the multiverse in Dungeons and Dragons. And the only thing you really got to worry about in terms of the slard is the ability to infiltrate and infect you. It's the fear and the spread that's the biggest problem with slard. Um, but you could still present them as a potential um, world-ending uh, monster. Oh, yeah. Man, thread the needle, Fred. I'm struggling with it today. Don't know why. Okay, so we are prob I'm probably going to come back and try to do some more of this. Because now that I've started on this process, I actually feel like I might use more than one brown on the um, talons. Because I just don't want it to... I don't want them to just be black. I think it'll be boring. Um, I think there's more I can do with it than just what I've done. So... It, it'll probably, it's probably going to be a, a third time round, plus all the colorization, and I really want to be able to take my time and do a really good job with that. And it will give me time to see in decent light what, what's going on. So I'm in, I'll, I'll just turn this round so you can see where, where we are currently. I can't get it too close, and my hands are in the way. Look, Fred, what are you doing? Um, bring it down a bit. So we've done the teeth, we've done the eyes, I've done part of the talons, I'm not happy with them. I've done the spikes on the back, the base is primarily done. Um, we just don't have the coloured patches yet, and I still need to do the, the claws on the, on the feet. But I'm getting there, I feel like I'm definitely getting there. We're almost, almost at a point where, I mean, does it look like this? No, but I don't think I want it to look like that. I think that's not the right look for me. No, I want it to look like a little tadpole. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Uh, I'm only kidding. That's not, I wasn't going to, I'm not doing, doing that. That's definitely not happening. <laughs> uh, and there are a lot of people here today who haven't been painting for that long, which is really interesting. I had no idea that a lot of people who've been painting for less than a year, and then a few, quite a few have been painting for more than five years, um, so yeah, a good mix of all sorts of different things. Uh, <laughs> what's that, Jared? I like the idea of brown or orange claws um, to match the, the skin tone. Yeah, I feel like browns and oranges make a lot of sense. I don't know that I'll go orange because I've done that with a highlighting color, but I think I will use a lighter brown later on to sort of make it work a bit better for me. Right now it's not working the way I'd hoped. Um, do you also do dungeon mapping on your videos i have in the past john i don't do a lot of it primarily because i think that um nate, nate at um, was 20 is better at it than i am 
I, I know that even AJ is probably much better at it than I am. I was probably one of the first people to try to do it live stream. I think I was. I think I was. Um, but yeah, no, I don't do a lot of it nowadays. Will I do it in the future? Look, the reality is that I'm working towards doing a lot more YouTube, but that's three years away. I've got to pay off the mortgage. Once I pay off the mortgage, I've got to deal with uh, renovating the house. Once that's done, then you're probably going to see a lot more of me. You might have to put up with me every day. Like, not necessarily painting, but every day. So for those of you who've been hanging out with me, I will be back tomorrow, uh, and we'll be doing some more painting, and we're going to do the colorizing, um, do, the, do the patches basically on, our, on the red slard. And you're welcome to hang out with me. Bring your own miniatures by all means. Thank you, no, no matter where you, where you are. Thank you to my patrons who have been supporting me. Thank you to those of you who have been watching my live stream. Um, so wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. You're welcome, Aaron. No problems. I'm glad the Venom Fang video was useful. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot more stuff on that. I just don't know when. Right. All right, I'm gone. I'll see.